Radio 2. It's half past seven now as we go back to the dance band years of George Elric. Many thanks and hello once again. Tonight I'm remembering the leader of what I think is nowadays generally agreed to be the finest of all the great British dance bands, Ambrose. You know, of the many bands I've been associated with over the years, I think his is the one I take greatest pride in having been a part of. Apart from my own, of course. To join the Ambrose Orchestra in the 30s was the ambition of many, many musicians. And to give you an idea why, I only have to drop the needle on any one of the countless elegant recordings which that great band made. Super, an old jazz number from the 20s that Sid Phillips updated for the Ambrose Orchestra, Deep Henderson. That recording dates from July 1937 and sounds as fresh to my ears as the day it was cut. Of course, that side of Ambrose, the smart, bright, forward-looking and often rather jazzy arrangements, was not what made him the most sought-after society band leader of them all. The live band was quite different from the recording band. Amy's policy of never playing too loud for dancing made him very popular with the ritzy couples who could whisper sweet nothings to each other as they glided across the floor. You know, it's said that many society weddings were made on the dance floors where Amy played. Few of the recordings give an idea of that whispering band, of course, 
But this next one has something of the flavour. It's a Sam Brown too, and as I've said before, one of the finest of all the singers of the dance band era. The song's one of those lovely Arthur Schwartz numbers that's still sung today. It's Then I'll Be Tired of You. Isn't that just delightful? Sam Brown and the Ambrose Orchestra in October of 1934. That was a short while before I joined the band. I was a relative latecomer, of course. Amy had established his original Embassy Club Orchestra as early as 1923, when I was still in short pants. From there, he'd gone to the Mayfair in 1927, laying the foundations for the great band it was to become. Then back to the embassy in 1933, and between seasons he'd take the band out on tours, which is where I came on the scene. Amy used to enjoy telling the story of how I came to be a member of his band. He described how, on one tour, while he was playing the Glasgow Empire, this little chap came up and asked for an audition, saying he'd been recommended by Clive Erard, the arranger. That's right. The little chap was me. Well, he sent the message via Joe Bernelli, his guitarist, to tell me he already had a drummer, the great Max Bacon, of course. So I asked Joe to tell him that I had also played tune percussion and sang. Ambrose condescended to hear me at three o'clock, so when I returned, I handed him my business card, which I'd had printed, George Elric, percussionist extraordinaire, on tour with the Ambrose Orchestra. Amy would laugh and say he reckoned it was my cheek that got me the job. <laughs> Thank you. 
Danzig With a new step to get you down Call the Danzig The rhythm is burning To dance you'll be yearning To find your romance When you dance with the Danzig The band has got rhythm Come on and dance with them You'll soon be in love Yes, in love with the Danzig Morning, morning, morning. You sway to and fro, dancing with you, love dancing too. Your partner is guiding while you are confiding. You've fallen in love, and in love through the dance. was called The Danza, never released on LP as far as I know, and recorded in September 1935. And by the way, contrary to what discographies have to say, I'm on that session as the percussionist extraordinaire and as a member of the vocal trio The Rhythm Brothers, the other two being Jack Cooper and Clive Erard. My time with the band was not that long, mind, and I was only on the recording studios with Amy on two or three occasions. Most of the time was spent touring, and my goodness, didn't we have some fun on the road. I remember on one very hot summer's day, we were playing a matinee at the Newcastle Empire. It was so hot that most unusually we were permitted to divest ourselves of our stage uniform jackets. So now it was time for Ambrose to introduce his lovely American girl singer, Evelyn Dahl. Evelyn, like us, was feeling the heat, so hadn't bothered to wear any petticoats or whatnot under her flimsy electric blue frock. Well, the footlights and limes came up, and the band began to giggle as she went into her number, because, have you guessed it? Yes, from our vantage point, she was to all intents and purposes in her birthday suit. Well, Amy was curious as to what the mirth was all about, till he turned round and beheld the lovely spectacle. Then he tried to hide the delicious Miss Doll from our view by masking her with his back, and that, of course, only prompted more helpless laughter from the boys. You can imagine the scene, I'm sure. Well, here is now the delectable Evelyn singing, as only she could, Lulu's back in town. Got to be found. Ask her 
when she cleaned my room what she did with my perfume i just can't lose it i've got to use it cause louie's back in town i've got to get my low cut gowns all pressed got to get a look like miss may west cause tonight i've got to look my best louie's back in town i've got to get a half a buck somewhere myself a boot and air. Louie's back in town. You can tell all his pets, all his Harlem coquettes. Mr. Rotis regret that he won't be around, that he won't be around. You can tell the man, man, not to call. I ain't coming home until the fall, and I might not get back home at all. Louie's back in town. When the phone bell rings, him all right, I'm all ready for tonight, shades pull down, the lights are low, stuff is ready and I won't say no, tell all his pets, all his Harlem coquettes, Mr. Rob's his regret, that he won't be around, no he won't be around, Louie's in town and I've got to meet him, Louie's in town and I've got to greet him, Louie's in town and I'll never, never cheat him, Louie's back. The one and only lovely Evelyn Dahl, belting out that old favourite in great style with the Ambrose Orchestra in September 1935. A very happy memory for me. Ambrose, like Jack Hilton, had a great flair for choosing good vocalists, and there weren't too many of them, believe me. Along with Evelyn and Sam, he had at one time or another Lou Abelardo, Eddie Grosbart, Denny Dennis, Jack Cooper and Donald Stewart, not to mention Maxie Bacon. As for the ladies, well, Elsie Carlyle, Vera Lynn and Anne Shelton, of course, I believe he even had a Scott in Ella Logan with him briefly in the early 30s. And then, of course, years later, when he'd given up the band, he managed the career of Kathy Kirby. Well, here are two of the best known of Amy's singers, Vera Lynn and Denny Dennis, to sing for you, Two Sleepy People. Father didn't love 
like you at all. Do you remember the reason why we married in the fall? To rent this little nest and get a bit of rest. Well, here we are, just about the same. Foggy little fella, drowsy little dame. Two sleepy people by dawn's early light And too much in love to say goodnight From December 1938, the Hoagy Carmichael classic Two Sleepy People Purveyed for us by Denny Dennis and Vera Lynn now, I've told the story of how Sid Phillips was the first to greet me when I joined Amy. I can remember he was very excited because I had proper pedal control timps and he asked if I could do glissandi on them. When I demonstrated to him how easy it was, he quickly started incorporating pastures for them in his arrangements. So here's another of Sid's great charts. Actually, not with me on timps here, I'd already left by this time to join Henry Hall, but I like to think that my kettle drums were at least in part responsible for this wonderful score, Night Ride. <laughs> Sid Phillips' marvellous score of Night Ride. Well, that gives a good idea of the sheer quality of the Ambrose Orchestra, and I hope I've managed to convey some of the fun and excitement of working in a great band like that. But, oh dear, look at that clock. It's time for our last number already. Well, I think it's better be that famous signature tune, don't you? You know the one I mean, I'm sure. In fact... It's Ambrose's concert version of When Day Is Done.
yearning, returning to hold you in my arms. Won't go, love, I know, love, without you, night has lost its charm. When day is done and grass is wet with twilight's dew, my lonely heart is sinking with the sun. Although I miss your tender kiss the whole day through, I miss you most of all. that Ronnie Monroe wrote for Ambrose of his long-time signature tune, When Day Is Done, and a fitting memory of a great band leader and a great character. So, that's me done again. Next week's my last in this series, and in that one I'll be paying tribute to the man who did more for my career than anyone. Yes, who else but Henry Hall? So, George Chisholm follows after the news, but till our next merry meeting, this is Mrs. Elric Sweet and George saying cheerio. BBC Radio 2.